I suppose it was when the clouds opened up over the target at Nakasaki. Target was there pretty as a picture. I made the run, let the bomb go. That was my greatest thrill. Bomb will not start a chain reaction in the water, converting it all to gas, letting all the ships on all the oceans drop down to the bottom. It will not blow out the bottom of the sea and let all the water run down the hole. It will not destroy gravity. I am not an atomic playboy exploding these bombs to satisfy my personal whim. Here's Tony going to his Cub Scout meeting. Tony knows the bomb can explode any time of the year, day or night. He is ready for it. Duck and cover. Add a boy, Tony. That flash means act fast. You may be in your schoolyard playing when the signal comes. That signal means to stop whatever you are doing and get to the nearest safe place fast. You might be out playing at home when the warning comes. Sometimes the bomb might explode without any warning. Be like Bert. When there is a flash, duck and cover and do it fast. This is what to do if you should be in a corridor. You duck and cover tight against the wall this way. Try to fall away from windows or doors with glass in them. You might be eating your lunch when the flash comes. Duck and cover under the table. The bomb might explode when there are no grown-ups near. Paul and Patty know this. They always try to remember what to do if the atom bomb explodes right then. It's a bomb. Duck and cover. Tony knew what to do. Notice how he keeps from moving or from getting up and running? He stays down until he is sure the danger is over. The man helping Tony is a civil defense worker. We must obey the civil defense worker. We must know how to duck and cover in the school bus. Duck and cover. Don't wait. Duck away from the windows fast. The glass may break and fly through the air and cut you. Duck and cover. This family knows what to do, just as your own family should. They know that even a thin cloth helps protect them, even a newspaper. We must be ready all the time for the atomic bomb. Duck and cover! exactly what your family would do if an attack came. Say at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's my silly imp. Yes, George, afraid. My fiance, Luther Marshall. We interrupt our normal program in the interest of security and civil defense measures as requested by the United States government. I propose the President of the United States advise the commander of the North Korean troops to withdraw his forces beyond the 38th parallel within one week or use that week to evacuate civilians from a specified list of North Korean cities. I've always been a firm believer that we should use the atomic bomb not only on Korea uh, but north of the Yalu River in Manchuria. It's not safe to hope for the best without preparing for the worst. Our object is not aggression. We need not become militaristic. However distasteful this may be to us, there is no choice in the matter. Let us build a bomb. It is my decided opinion 
that the United States of America should immediately begin the construction of the H-bomb. I feel we must make the H-bomb. It is my personal opinion that we should manufacture and produce the H-bomb in quantity. This man, like thousands of others around the country, is suffering from a dread disease called nuclearosis. The symptoms? Nuclear blindness. All he can see is a mushroom cloud. He is blinded from the fear of it, deaf from the sound of it. Uh, there is a short circuit in his brain. He can only think of the awfulness of the nuclear bomb. There are those few who loudly maintain that there is no actual threat to the free world at all. Certainly none that can justify either nuclear testing or nuclear armament. The opposite viewpoint holds that the development of our nuclear power has been an absolutely necessary protection against communist hostility and nuclear threats. In this view, the fallout casualties, if any, will be seen as those of unidentified soldiers in the service of humanity. Unknown soldiers in a war which has not struck. Enough exposure to radiation will cause loss of hair. The treatment, if you'd insist, would be symptomatic, a toupee. But the condition would only be temporary. Your hair would come back. Same color, same cowling. A submarine bomb exploded in a harbor might affect a city. The affected area would be a poor picnic site, but might be entered briefly or passed through quickly with a varying degree of risk. Risk is something the military doesn't have a corner on. Occupational hazards are accepted in a matter-of-fact manner in civilian life. Risk is part of the pattern of daily routine. A bomb equivalent to 20 million tons of TNT would cause an intense fire called a firestorm in an area of about 2,000 square miles around the center of the blast. And in such an area, it would be futile, desperately futile, to construct what are called fallout shelters. We ought to learn something from the Second World War in this respect. And the bombing there, even by Second World War bombs in Hamburg and Tokyo and in other cities, showed that shelters became centers for incinerating or asphyxiating the people who were in them. A new housing development near Denver, Colorado, shows the nation's first model homes with built-in fallout shelters. The room is designed with an atomic war in mind. But behind each eight-inch thick reinforced concrete wall, it may prove to be just what the harried housewife is looking for when life with the kids gets too hectic. Now, children, I, I want you to sit down here against the wall. That's it. Now, crouch tied up against it. Now, listen, kids. If they're dropping an atomic bomb, it may go off any second now. Whatever happens, I'll give the signal when it's all right for us to get up. If there's an explosion, we'll wait about a minute after it's all over. Then we'll go upstairs and take a look around, see if it's all right for us to clean up. Can a man have protective devices in order to protect his family once they are in the shelter from, let's say, strangers that try to use a crowbar to get in? I'd say, from what I have been talking about, the matter of self-defense, it would be wise for a man to at least weigh the possibility of putting some protective devices in his shelter together with the other elements of his survival kit. Uh, let me tell you how the commies plant propaganda back home. Some time ago, Mac, Johnny, and I managed to get our last leave together in a big city. These poor boys will shed their innocent blood in a war that this country is provoking. You get a load of that. Only communist countries can guarantee you peace. It is an awful responsibility which has come to us. We thank God that it has come to us instead of to our enemies. And we pray that he may guide us to use it in his ways and for his purposes. Scene 26, take two. All right now, James, will you tell them that the United States government now wants to turn this great destructive force into something good for mankind. Now they have heard of our plan for their evacuation. Will you ask King Judah to get up and tell us now what his people think and if they're willing to go? 
Will you tell them in King Judah that everything being in God's hands, it cannot be other than good? The Islanders are a nomadic group and are well pleased that the Yanks are going to add a little variety to their lives. We do not know how it's going to sound, but 42,000 men here are watching. All of the observers, 10 seconds. All of the observer ships are in position in the open sea. We're about 10 miles away. I fire the target. Four, three, two, one. You are the target of those who would trample the liberties of free men. You are in the crosshairs of the bomb site. An enemy is centering on you. You are a citizen of the free world. A citizen of the United States of America. You are the target. Our president has told us that even against the most powerful defense, an aggressor in possession of an effective number of atomic bombs could cause hideous damage. Today, in the age of hydrogen weapons, evacuation from target areas is our best assurance of survival. Whether in a private home, in an apartment, or your place of business, or in a motor vehicle, take cover. Motorists should park cars to the side of the highway. A clear lane must be kept open for emergency vehicles, fire apparatus, ambulances, engineering equipment. We must learn to live in a world where we have the hydrogen bomb and the enemy of freedom has the hydrogen bomb.